If you were to create the ultimate basketball superstar, he would be a player of extraordinary athletic ability, a player who could dominate his sport with a vast array of skills. He's a great defender, rebounder, shot blocker, definitely could score. He's the total package. He would also possess a tireless work ethic, constantly pushing himself to the limit in his pursuit of victory. He'll work himself into a lather like a racehorse. He'd be going out there harder and harder when things got more and more difficult. He would be a fierce competitor who could command the court through sheer force of will. You're going to have to cut Michael Jordan's heart out to beat him. He would possess the vision and the artistry to bring a new dimension to the game. Creativity, thy name is Michael. He would also have the leadership to galvanize his teammates. The way he plays, he will not let the Bulls lose. And he would have a flair for rising to the occasion time after time. Michael Jordan in the final seconds again! He would display a passion for the game a passion to lift his performance to its very highest level. And he would captivate fans, not only with his talent, but also with his charisma. Just don't rub my head. <laughs> Through it all, he would carry himself with an air of grace and dignity that would make him the perfect ambassador for the sport he loved. It would seem nearly impossible to find all of these qualities embodied in one player. And yet there was such a player in Michael Jordan. A player for whom nothing seemed impossible. A player who was the very definition of basketball excellence. He does everything great. I mean, he's, he's the ultimate player in my eyes. If there was a you know, basketball player uh, in, in Webster's Dictionary, it didn't have to be a picture of Michael Jordan. He grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina, and from the beginning, there was something distinctive about Michael Jordan. He came in this world eating. I mean, he <laughs> loved to eat. And I tell you, yeah, <laughs> he could not feed him enough. We had the doctor put him on Siri, I guess, when he was three weeks old, because his milk was just not enough. Michael's first taste of the game of basketball came in pickup games against his older brother, Larry, which ignited his competitive fire. My dad built the basketball court in the backyard, and so they went out there and went at it all the time. We used to play an awful lot, you know. We would play every day. And uh, I would normally beat him. So he really helped me create some determination in myself to, to beat him. If I could beat him, I felt I could beat anybody. And I finally, when I started to grow and my skills started to catch up with my height, I started to beat him. He would go on to attend Laney High School, where he blended in as just another face in the crowd. Michael was a good student, and he had a, a lot of uh, fun in the classroom. He had a sense of humor, and he was well-liked by the students. The place where Michael did hope to stand out was on the basketball court. But during his sophomore year, he would face a disappointing setback. I'm the coach who uh, cut Michael as a sophomore. He was still growing, he was a good ball player, but we didn't think he was good enough yet to, to really make the contribution on the bossy that, that uh, we felt we needed. Working hard to improve, Michael would not only make the team the following year, he played well enough to earn a scholarship to the University of North Carolina, a school rich in basketball tradition. But he still faced skepticism about his ability. I told him to go into math. That's where the money was. <laughs> Coming up in high school, I wasn't that known as a basketball player. I mean, everyone felt I was going to go to North Carolina and sit on the bench for four years and then come back home and work at a local gas station or something. But Michael would be chosen to start as a freshman by legendary coach Dean Smith. And in the 1982 national championship game against Georgetown, he would burst into prominence by hitting one of the biggest shots in NCAA history. The tie, 18. Shot, Jordan! Michael Jordan! The shot gave Smith his first NCAA title and marked a turning point in Michael's career. 
getting a shot against Georgetown in 1982, it kind of ignited a fire inside of me that nothing was going to stop me. Propelled by his newfound confidence, Jordan would now soar into the national spotlight. He wanted to get better, and then he had the ability to get better. And from that point on, I, I never seen anything like it. I guess that is a pretty fitting end of the ballgame. Jordan, look at that! Unleashing his talent, Michael became a two-time college player of the year. But following his junior season, he would make the decision to turn pro. I talked to Coach this morning, and you know, uh, you know, he helped me, and my parents helped me, and, uh, and I just, you know, I felt that would be better for me to to start now uh, while I'm young. But before heading off to the NBA, Jordan would make his debut on the world stage. He was named to the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, where he would be guided by another coaching legend, Indiana's Bobby Knight. He wants the best sports players, and. You know, really, that's somewhat similar to Coach Smith, except for the language, but, you know, I can get up with that. Smoothly adapting to a new coaching style, Michael would continue his rise to stardom by leading the U.S. to the gold medal. And he was now ready for the next step in his blossoming career, the NBA. The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan. Carolina. As the third overall draft pick, Michael was expected to make an impact, but few could have imagined just how sensational he would be. Jordan went to the floor and watched Jordan. Oh, give him again. Uh oh, Jordan to the hook. Oh. Michael took the hook. Taking the league by storm, Jordan would electrify his sport in a way that few athletes had ever done before. The bus nine to nothing here. Oh. There's the double. Jordan gets it. Jordan against Dale Ellis. Off to the right. Jordan on the drive. Falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. Jordan. Oh, what a drive. Oh, what a drive. And Ewing wants the ball and gets it. Jordan on the drive. Can he get there? Can he get there? For Michael, it seemed anything was possible. And in just his second season, he would stage an epic playoff performance. Got it! 63 for Jordan! A new NBA record has been set in the Boston Garden. I don't believe what I just saw! I saw man fly! Here comes Mr. Jordan! Action! Well, I think he's probably the uh, most exciting player that's coming to this league since probably Dr. J. Hopefully I can make a name for myself and not try to live off his name. Uh, I think Michael Jordan sounds pretty good to me. After a few short years, he was already being mentioned among the all-time greats. You had two players that played on the floor that excited you by their play on the floor, myself and, and Larry. And now here come one that excites you playing in the air. Well, first of all, you start talking about the fact that the guy literally is embarrassing the league. He's that good. Gets it away to Jordan. Oh, no time for Mr. Jordan. Short to the hook. Oh. You might see something if you watched him that you'd never seen, but seen before and would never see again. Look at the air. Look at the hang time. Look at the flying motion. Tipped it out to Jordan down the lane all the way. He has a force of personality that's not the same thing as sports talent, but elevates that talent. If you didn't know anything about basketball and he walked into the room, you'd say, that, that's somebody. That's got to be somebody. Jordan's appeal transcended basketball. He became a cultural phenomenon that extended to the world of marketing and media. And he had even become a trendsetter. You know, he had his own particular style. He wore those baggy shorts. He was one of the first athletes to shave his head. He was so good, so charismatic, that whatever he did suddenly became popular and became cool. I don't know, something about his, the combination of everything, you know? The game, obviously. He was a tremendous athlete. And he had a great smile. Something very wonderful and warm about when he smiled. And he really communicated well with the camera. It was great. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in commercials or want to see a, 
your posters or your billboards all over the place. You know, I'm just a country boy from North Carolina, and to be on television and do these things were great. Nobody in the world could cover my main man, Michael Jordan. Oh, no. I always wanted to be an easygoing guy. My personality is that uh, I'm outgoing, I love people, I love being around people, I love kids. So if I didn't have the personality to do it, it would be tough. But my personality fits uh, this mold very easily. It seemed that fans just couldn't get enough of the game's newest superstar. And Air Jordan would never leave them disappointed. In a league of stars, in a game of stars, you were the star of stars. Congratulations on being the 1988 All-Star MVP. Jordan had risen to superstar status. However, his resume was still missing the one achievement that would cement his place among the game's most elite players. What separated me from Larry Bird and Magic Johnson was, you know, they had championships to back their individual accolades. So, I mean, uh, that drove me more so than anything. To compete to, to win, that's all I live for. Wide really. left, Pippen, three seconds, Jordan's force up shot to left. Oh, yes! Win. Michael Jordan <laughs> saves the day. When you lose, you know, you're easily forgotten, and, and I don't think anyone want to go to their graves forgotten. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line, a shot on Elo. Guys, the Bulls win! They win! But in spite of his individual brilliance, Michael had yet to prove that he could lead his team to a title. And as he tried to climb to the top of the NBA, he found that one major obstacle continued to block his path. People forget how hard it was for that guy to deal with the Detroit Pistons. You know, they were the one person that's saying, you're not so hot, you know, we can stop you. And they did. Well, the Pistons have moved on, but you really got to feel for this man right here. For three straight years, the Bulls would meet the Pistons in the playoffs. And for three straight years, they would suffer a bitter defeat. Chicago Bulls continue to frustrate themselves and their fans. I felt it was very disappointing each and every time that we ended up getting to this hurdle and couldn't get over it. The Pistons return to the NBA With each passing year, Michael's frustration grew deeper, while the whispers grew louder that Jordan was simply a one-man show who could not elevate the performance of his team. I had to contend with people saying, well, a scoring champion doesn't win championships, which, was, which drove me nuts. Defensively, the Pistons are pointing totally at Michael Jordan. They don't believe that any of the other four Bulls can hurt them at this point. You can tell when we're beating him, he's looking around like, I'm doing all I can do. I'm getting 60 points, 45 points, 39 points, and we're still losing. As the 1991 season began, Jordan knew a change was needed if the Bulls were to finally fulfill their destiny. I felt that we were going to lose out on this opportunity in terms of you know, my leadership and what I had to do on the basketball court. I was going to do whatever I had to, to do to get us a championship. He would focus on getting his teammates more involved and making the most of their talents. Stock all the way from the ground, layup, blocked by Jordan! Michael Jordan! What a play! And here Jordan down court. The Stacey Keene slammed off. Michael Jordan doing it all. Greer falls down, and Kirk Wright steals the ball. And into Jordan. Michael blowing in, beats Pippen for the chance. Anything the Bulls lacked, Jordan would provide as they achieved their best record ever. If you need something done, I'd do it. You know, defense, passing, scoring, whatever. That was the challenge that I took. Returning to the conference finals, they found their tormentors, the Pistons, waiting once again. But this time, things would be different. Pistons with the numbers. Edwards lost it. Oh, Jordan stripped the dribble. Finally, 
earning their vindication, the Bulls completed a four-game sweep and put the Pistons' nightmare behind them. I remember looking directly in his eyes, and it was like, whatever you do, whatever you say, we're going to beat you. And once you get him like that, all you can do is move aside because there's no stopping this freight train. And the court piston heading back to the locker room. Their season has concluded while the Chicago Bulls advance to the NBA championship round. As he made his NBA Finals debut, Jordan's timing was perfect. He would face Magic Johnson and the Lakers in what would be Magic's last trip to the finals. This series tends to be, at least in the public mind, Air Jordan against the Magic Man. There's no question, you're not going to avoid the Magic Michael thing. We're going to take our friends and fans on a trip into Dreamland, Magic and Michael. Magic had led his Lakers to five championships in the 80s. If Michael were to inherit his mantle as the NBA's premier superstar, now would be the time to do it. And the entire sports world would be watching. We didn't feel like the pressure was on us, but the challenge was there, yeah, especially for myself. You know, here I'm going against one of the greatest players in the game, and I, I want to beat him. With his opportunity now in front of him, Michael would rise to the challenge and lift his teammates along with him as Chicago would dominate the Lakers. Devon's with a bounce pass in Jordan, the steal, tight ropes the sideline, all the way to the hoop and a dunk. A spectacular play by Jordan. The Bulls have exploded. Showtime as he skies into the air, and Air Jordan throws it down. Michael and the Bulls would capture their first championship. torch of NBA supremacy had emphatically been passed from Johnson to Jordan. Everybody knew that it was coming. It's just when. When, when was he going to be ready to, to receive it and take it? And boy, did he receive it and take it. <laughs> I mean, he came up and snatched it here. Give it here, Magic. Uh, it's my turn now. And the Chicago Bulls have won for seven long years he had pursued the nba title and now that he had finally achieved his goal he seemed to take on an even more heroic quality i think the fact that he failed the, the first few times he took a run at the at the title made people connect to him and relate to him a little bit better because they saw that he wasn't just this machine I mean, everyone's failed at certain things, and to see a star of his magnitude fail and, and feel it so, so deeply raised his stature in people's minds. And it seemed that fans everywhere were reveling in Michael's triumph. From a public ex acceptance, you're, you're never a champion until you are a champion. And once that burden was gone, um, I mean, he just soared to even greater heights that it's just hard to imagine. As a member of this team and an organization in the city of Chicago for seven years, it brings me great joy to say we are the world champions. Thank you. Michael and the Bulls were raising the championship banner at last. But as the 92 season began, it was clear that his hunger for winning was far from satisfied. Michael! It's like the guy on the King of the Hill situation. Once you're on top of the hill, uh, you want to defend it. Having finally ascended to the NBA's pinnacle, Jordan was determined to stay there. Michael, you know, he, he really took matters in his own, own hands right there at the stretch of the game. Here comes Jordan, behind the back. Whenever it's time for Mikey to take over a game, you know, he takes it over. You know, it, it just let us know that, hey, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling good. It's my game. I love it, I love it.
Flacco led Chicago to the best record in the league, and in the process, he would add to his growing list of personal accomplishments. Three MVPs, six straight scoring titles, you are simply the standard by which basketball excellence is measured. Congratulations. Chicago Stadium, the site tonight as the Bulls begin defense of their NBA championship. The biggest focus of the season is the playoffs. I thrive on it, I love it. It's a joy for me to step in front of that camera when you know millions of people are watching and show the skills and, and the creativity that you have as an athlete. Jordan drives it. As the Bulls easily dispatched the Miami Heat, Jordan was at his sensational best. Goes inside. Oh, classic Jordan! Classic Michael Jordan! While against Patrick Ewing and his bruising Knicks, he would be at his most determined. Oh, he is ripped by Swartz. Patrick is one of my best friends. But yet, at one point in time in that series, I was ready to go blows with him. Despite New York's physical play, Jordan refused to be intimidated. If anything, their strategy only served to inspire him even further. Here's Jordan! But he would save his most dramatic performance for the final act in a showdown against rival superstar Clyde Drexler and the Portland Trailblazers. Jordan against Drexler, Clyde against Michael. See, this is what Michael lived for. He wanted this challenge. Everyone was saying that this would determine who's a better guard in the league. I looked at that as a challenge, and hopefully by the end of that series, people understood the difference. And he would waste no time erasing any doubts, putting on a spectacular show right from the start. Offensive explosion, Jordan propelled the Bulls to their second straight title and raised his own popularity to new heights. But incredibly, it was about to soar even higher. That summer, he would join Larry Bird and Magic Johnson on the fabled Dream Team. You can't get too close to my boys. <laughs> but even in their celebrated company, it was Jordan who would take center stage in a frenzy of international attention. We didn't know that the hype that was uh, in store for us until we started traveling around. We see helicopters and motorcades all over the place. Hey, this is big. You know, this is bigger than what we ever anticipated. I mean, Beatlesque was about the only thing you could think of, and. I, I just have never seen anything like it. But the one thing about Jordan that I would always say that makes him, to me, the most remarkable athlete that I've ever seen, and probably ever will see, is that he was always better than his hype. Okay, so now he's hyped even more, but he gets even better. He keeps getting better and better and better, no matter what you do. I, I just have never seen anything like it. Well, this group may well be the greatest team ever assembled in the history of team sports. Michael capped the Olympics with his second gold medal. But he wasn't stopping there as his competitive fire continued to burn. It's been uh, eight years going into my ninth year. and We got two championships and uh, hopefully we got a lot left. As the 1993 season began, Jordan would add even more astounding images to his seemingly endless highlight reel. Yes, here comes Mike! Here's Jordan in deep on Elo. Oh! Oh! 
Jordan found the chart right to Jordan. Time winding down. Michael for three. Yeah! 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 Yes! 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 A winner! Unbelievable! Michael, what would you like to do? Michael, Michael. 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 The entire season had seemed to become a command performance for Jordan. It's an unbelievable sight to be pulling into a hotel at 3 in the morning on the bus. You get the turn around the corner, and all of a sudden, the whole street is lit up. You think, wow, they're filming a movie out here or something. Well, it's not. It's just that the Bulls are arriving. Michael Jordan may have a chance maybe to see him. In the postseason, he would lead the Bulls back to the finals with his trademark flair. Yeah! But while Chicago playing for the NBA championship had become a familiar plot, he is amazing. The 93 finals would bring Michael a new and entertaining co-star. God want us to win the world championship. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, y'all. No, no, I talked but... to him another night. However, not even divine intervention was Jordan enough. Spins away on Marley. He'll take it all the way to the basket and drops it in. As Jordan would relentlessly attack Charles Barkley and the Suns. Now underneath, Michael fights him, scores with a left hand. Michael Jordan now looks like he is going to drive every time he gets his hand on a ball until they stop him. His onslaught would include a personal finals best 55 points in game four. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He's fouled. Not stop him. I never said we had to stop him. Well, we can't stop him. him. Nobody can stop him. The Bulls would wrap up the series in six games, sealing it in dramatic fashion. That's the first score by anybody other than Michael Jordan in the entire fourth quarter. Michael had now reached the pinnacle of his career. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA. Solidifying his status as the game's greatest player, Jordan had done what Bird and Magic could not, win a third straight title, a feat not achieved since Bill Russell's great Celtics of the 60s. Congratulations, it's a great accomplishment. He had seemingly done it all, but Michael's most astounding move was yet to come. After we won the championship, you know, I sat in on the floor and just reminisced about the whole season and, and the years that I've had at the game of basketball and where my, my life was and where my challenges were. Do I have to do anything else? Can I just sit here for a few minutes? It started wearing me down mentally because of all the things that were happening and some of the responsibility that I was gaining, the expectations. Mentally, I was exhausted because I forgot where I was. I forgot how I got there. Because of being on top for so long, you forget about a lot of the stages and the steps that it took to get to that point. And my father and I had a conversation about just stepping away. Jordan had reached a crossroads, and he would spend the summer sorting out his feelings. I wanted to give myself some time to make sure this was the right thing, this is what I really wanted to do. I asked Phil, Jackson, frankly, I said, what kind of challenges can you give me next year? If you can give me one challenge, I, could, I would not retire. He felt like, if I don't have the desire to do it, if I don't have the thirst to play basketball, it's not as much fun as it used to be, then I'm gonna lose my gift. We were crying and trying to come up with different types of challenges, and I couldn't come up with one. He couldn't come up with one for me. But the sense of anguish Michael felt as he wrestled with his decision would pale in comparison with what he was now about to face. Last night, we began the show with the disappearance of Michael Jordan's father. Tonight, the worst fears have come true. James Jordan was found dead, the victim of an apparent murder. It was a very difficult moment for me. And somehow, I just kept my head high and look at the, the good of it, you know, the, the time that I, you know, we used to spend and the, the education that he gave me. And I thought about all the things that he used to tell me, just turn a negative into a positive. And here I was dealing with him in that way. 
It was tough. Shaken by the death of his father, who had always been his closest advisor and supporter, his choice had now become clear. And soon, the world would know about it. When I lose uh, the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. It was something that you know, my father and I talked about way before he passed. Uh, me retiring from basketball and then playing baseball. And the final year that we won the championship was like his biggest push to go and do it. No one could present a challenge for me at the time other than what my father was presenting to me, which was to go and play baseball. Following his father's advice, Michael would become a minor league baseball player. But more than just a diversion, his new pastime was part of an emotional journey. I think what baseball did for me was it gave me an opportunity to revisit all those moments that I had uh, with my father. And when I really thought about it, I said, he was here. You know, everything that he's taught me, everything that I accomplished was him. It took me a while to understand that. And once I understood it, I could accept it and deal with it. So it was a therapeutic experience for me. I guess it made me at peace with myself. But in March of 1995, he would leave baseball and return to Chicago. He calls him about 7 in the morning and says, you know, hey, let's, let's go to breakfast. So we go to breakfast, we talk a little bit. He's in a suit. Uh, so, you know, he said, let's go over to practice and, and screw around before we'll practice. I'm like, all right, fine, you know, we'll do that. You know, no problem. Uh, so we're out there just shooting. He has his suit on still. I have my practice stuff on. So shooting, a shooting game goes into a shooting contest. And all of a sudden, the contest goes into, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then it goes from, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then before you know it, we're playing on one-on-one. -on -one. I started attending a couple of practices and uh, getting out there with the guys and the enjoyment that came out of that really started to make me feel good. The economy has produced 6.1 million jobs since I became president. And if Michael Jordan goes back to the Bulls, it'll be 6,100,001 new jobs. Michael Jordan announced today he's coming back to basketball. One guy said the words, I'm back, and it set the world on fire. Just turned it upside down. <laughs> I never thought I'd come back to the game of basketball. I never thought I would have that, that feeling to come back. But when it, what drove me back was I truly love the game. Today, Michael Jordan, at age 32, tries to accomplish what no one else truly has in team sports history. After an 18-month absence, Jordan was back, and his return sparked a magical rush. Here's Jordan. Bulls trail by one. Michael. Oh, yeah. Walk on the track. Michael Jordan. And he instantly conjured up indelible images of the past. Yes. a high for the NBA this season. 55 points by Michael Jordan. The inbound to Michael. Racing the clock. Jordan for the win. Yeah! Right there again! He is now back! Jordan had seemingly returned to his role of savior, but in the playoffs, the young Orlando Magic were ready to show him that times had changed. 91-90 the score. Chicago with the lead with 18 and one tenth seconds to play. All right, here we go. And Jordan by Anderson. And Jordan spinning his way against Jordan's miscue seemed almost unthinkable, but he would have one more chance to deliver his expected heroics. Jordan played by Royal. Jordan, Here I was in those moments that you, know, you take pride in being put in, and yet I let the team down. Michael and the Bulls would never recover from his struggles in game one. Boy, Michael's missed a lot of close-in shots if he's tried to take the game. As Chicago was eliminated by the Magic, Jordan discovered that his unique ability to lift his team to victory was only a memory. And now, 
he was left to wonder whether he would ever recapture his former throne. Give him credit. He's probably still the greatest player in the game overall. But uh, he just, uh, he, he wasn't his, his, his old self. I was very demoralized, I think. Um, and I, I, I was really looking in the mirror the whole time. I had doubts that maybe I can't play the same type of game that I used to play because I wasn't able to do it on call. So in, in sitting in that locker room and very disappointed, I made a promise to myself that come next year, I'm gonna be ready for this game. Rededicating himself to the game, Jordan attacked his workouts with a vengeance. And he spent the summer honing his talent like never before. I felt compelled each and every day when I got up uh, to go out and, and somehow tune up and get back to where I was. Uh, so I was that much more motivated uh, to prove to the world that don't write me off yet. As he joined his teammates for the 96 season, Michael was embarking not just on a personal quest, but also on an historic mission. I said to Mike, yeah, it's a great challenge anyway, because no one's come back and helped the team win a championship. So this is a great challenge in that regard. I was being judged on that uh, from the public, from the media, uh, because of my age and because of my being away from the game for two years, almost. And the only way that I could prove them wrong was to win a championship. You know, from start to finish. And from the beginning, he was ready to prove his point. Michael looking to make a move here. Clear out from Longman and picks up. Oh, with authority. Wham! In your face. MJ between them all. He got every one of them. Yes! Jordan picked it off. Behind the back. Oh, yes, sir. Wow! He is, he is in his own lid zone today. And it looks good. Three on the shot clock. Here comes Michael. Puts it on the floor. Pull up 16 footer. Put two more down for the king. He gets the beat. Here is Jordan. Michael tonight is showing the entire repertoire. With Michael on our side, it was, you know, the guys are on the bench the whole game saying, oh, we're only 12 now. You know, we're, we're going to come back. Jordan going and throws it up. Oh, oh it's getting punched it in on an amazing move. <laughs> This guy was back in his full force as the most dominant player in the game. Not only had his dominance returned, so had his zest for the game. Come on, I'll give you a jump shot right now. I'll give you a jump shot, shoot. Oh, you don't want it. Hey, my boy don't want to play, do it. He hurting this one. You hurt me, y'all. Get your back. Get your back. His comeback had turned into a joyride as Michael would regain the MVP award and lead the Bulls into NBA history with a record for regular season victories. Leading the Bulls to an astounding 72 wins, Jordan stamped them as one of the greatest teams ever and incredibly raised his own stature even higher. He was up at the very top, the most popular athlete in the world for eight, nine, ten years. He leaves the game and comes back stronger than ever. I don't think anyone in the history of sport has ever pulled off something like that. And the guy, uh, and he did it again somehow. In the playoffs, Michael would come full circle. Again, facing Orlando, he would seize the opportunity for redemption. Erasing the memory of last year's defeat, the Bulls swept the Magic in the Eastern Conference Finals. Jordan was now on the verge of completing his quest. The Bulls once again make it to the NBA Finals. And facing the Seattle Supersonics on the NBA's ultimate stage, he would remove any remaining doubts that he was the Michael Jordan of old. Michael Jordan is in another time, in another space, on another plateau. And as he led Chicago to victory over Seattle, Michael's comeback was now complete. And for the fourth time in six years, Jordan rules. After a two-year absence, the Chicago Bulls have regained the NBA throne. 
It marked the culmination of a journey that had begun with his retirement. Fittingly and symbolically, it had ended on Father's Day. So I think it was a signal to some degree that he was there with me. It was a, certain emotions that I couldn't really control, knowing that you know, the success of it was had something to do with him, you know, and, and that meant a lot to me. Michael, I know that the first one was sweet, but how much sweeter was this one? Well, you know, it, I can't even put it in words. My father did what it means to me. I know he's watching. This is my daddy. with so many God-given abilities, and then his own self-drive to make him even better than that is something that takes him off the scale. He is the most tenacious competitor. Add that to his physical gifts, and he has a sense of history and a sense of what his legacy can be if he keeps pushing it. Michael on the drive. Oh, right by everybody with the left something compelling about this guy, so likable, uh, so dignified and classy, and yet with the athletic heart of an assassin. Tell me I can no longer fly. I don't want you to. It's not how hard you push along the way. It's having something in your finish. Michael Jordan had regained his place as the NBA's preeminent player. He had recaptured the title and achieved one of sports' greatest comebacks. But as usual, he was intent on achieving even more. against the Utah Jazz in the finals, he continued to display the many different ways he could lead a team. MJ, top of the circle, against Russell. Michael, hangs, fires, scores! Following his Game 1 heroics, Jordan would provide a different kind of drama in Game 5. Weakened by a stomach virus, he would keep the Bulls in the game through sheer will and determination. As a leader, you want to be there for your team. As long as I'm able to walk and run and shoot, I've always been there sick, you know, it didn't matter. With the score tied in the final minute, an exhausted Jordan would summon his strength and deliver the crushing blow. Back, Michael. Open three. Yes! They lead it! 38 points for the king! The Kadagger at him with a three! Yes! That he gave us today was unbelievable, you know, and his teammates, we really appreciate the way that he steps up and shows his leadership for our ball club. With Michael winning his fifth Finals MVP award, the Bulls captured their fifth title. But even in their moment of triumph, one question lingered. How much longer would Jordan play? Do you think you guys will get together and do it all again? Oh, uh, tough question to ask us right now. We're just enjoying Enjoy what we're yourself. doing. Celebrate. Go ahead and celebrate. Yes. With rumors swirling of his impending retirement, the 1998 season took on an air of finality for Jordan. Throughout the league, crowds turned out in record numbers to witness what was dubbed the last dance. Embracing his role as the game's ambassador, Michael's popularity had never been higher, and his aura never greater. He was the focus of attention all season long, and each night he would leave fans with a performance to remember. Lots of guys are strong, and lots of guys have skill, and only one guy has this level of artistry. At the All-Star Game in New York, he would capture MVP honors for the third time. 
I'm only going to allow him to have his trophy if he promises to come back and do it again. And with Michael driving the Bulls, they were taking aim at yet another NBA championship. You don't find leaders like that in this game. You don't find people that want to practice and lead in practice as well as in games. Though it was to be his final season, he never wavered from his own lofty standards of excellence, continuing to perform in his incomparable style. His game is beautiful to watch, not just effective in an athletic sense, but theatrically he is beautiful. He has that presence. There's something about him. Kittles against Jordan. Not to waste the by Michael. I've seen every basket that Michael's made as a professional. You think you see him do something he's done before, and then you say, no, this is something he made up, it's different. I just find myself as a fan jumping out of my seat. At the age of 35, Jordan became the oldest player ever to win the league's MVP award, capturing the honor for the fifth time. And in a rematch with Utah in the NBA Finals, he was as spectacular as ever bringing the Bulls to the brink of their sixth title of the decade. Oh, the Michael with a hang time move. But with Chicago leading three games to two, he would save one of his most remarkable performances for last. In game six in Utah, the Bulls trailed by three with less than a minute to play. Facing a critical moment, Michael would add a stirring final chapter to his legend. Out front to the man, Michael Jordan. Jordan up top, fake left, go right. He's there, lay it up, score it easily. Wow. Throughout his career, he had answered every challenge. And with his resolve tested once again, Jordan would respond as he had done so often before. Stockton, inside of Carmel, they double it. Jordan knocks it away from him. Jordan's got it. The Bulls can win it right here. The Bulls can win it. Unbelievable. And now, all that remained was to provide the perfect exclamation point. 16 seconds left, Bulls down one. Michael against Russell, 12 seconds. 11, 10, Jordan, Jordan to drive, hangs, fires, yes! Scores! He scores! The Bulls lead 87-86. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship in the last eight years. What? what a joy to watch. That may have been the last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. I am here to, to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. For the second time in his career, Michael Jordan caps a championship three-peat with retirement. His poster hangs on walls in remote Chinese villages. They try to imitate his moves in small town gyms everywhere. I chose to walk away knowing that you know, I could still play the game. And that's what I've always wished, for, you know, for my career to end. You know, that, that's exactly the way I wanted to end it. And every athlete's dream is to have a career like his and, and finish with the championship and making your last shots. Michael just seems to have almost a little magic with him. That's exciting. It's fun to watch. And, and it, uh, it's stuff that, you know, legends are made of. The way he's carried himself and what he's done for, for this sport in general and for, for people, he's allowed them to dream. You know, people really didn't want to believe a man could actually fly. And he gave everyone that belief that for a little bit, maybe they could. guy was a, a, just an icon. He, he's a one-man show. And uh, how much we're going to miss him, you can't even say in words. I guess what impresses me the most is, is that he's determined to be Michael Jordan every night. 
I never got the impression that he threw his shoes out or sent his uniform out there and took the night off. In my life, I don't know that I ever saw another athlete with such a remarkable set of qualities of mind, body, and spirit. He's an American original. If a friend from Europe comes to me and says, I'm in your country, what do I see? I would say, well, go to the Grand Canyon and take a river trip down it for a couple days and go to Chicago and watch Michael Jordan play. He's who we are.
the shoes. Money's gotta be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. 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 Look, Bob, I can fly. With these thumping sneakers. Overcome the acceleration of gravity by the application of my muscle power in the vertical plane, thus producing low altitude Earth orbit. I got it. What about the shoes? Yeah, my friend. Yo, this is Mars Black. This is my main man, Michael Jordan. And this is a pair of high Air Jordans from Nike. I look down at the camera just a little, little hardy. I think Bugs is more of a point guard than Spike. Spike is more of a coach. A what? He doesn't like to play much because he loves to talk basketball. That would be the fine position for, for Spike as a coach, but Bugs would be a point guard. Bugs really, when he heard about the campaign, he wanted it to be called the Hair Jordan as opposed to the Air Jordan. Bugs, I watched Bugs for a long time when I was a kid, and it didn't seem he lost too many battles, so I knew him would win. Not only Michael and Bugs, but we have a relationship with Nike that will hopefully join other Looney Tunes characters. Now we both wear Nikes, so that makes a difference. He's a little bit light on the feet than I am. Somehow my mind presented a challenge that I just couldn't refuse. All my dreams when I was a kid to play Major League Baseball, and I think this renews that a little bit. Eight minutes, I get to do whatever I want and how I want to do it. He's back! He's back! That comes in, in playing and challenging the best competition and seeing your game evolve as you meet each and every challenge day in and day out. And when you need that remembrance of dominance, you go back in a past situation and bring it into your mind to get you in the right mood or the right mode to deal with the challenge that you're faced with at this particular time. direct the company. Make the logo bigger. I had to approve the storyboards. I gave them certain concepts to think about. Where my life, where my career is at this time. We are running this, this company that we feel can mold and build upon the concept that was originated by Nike. We've kind of taken the baton from them and expanded and taken a whole nother step. Placing this maybe right up above the store. Is it the black? Oh yeah. My man, this is what a smile to my face. Please be one tomorrow. I am here to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. 
There won't be a, another announcement to baseball or anything of that nature. I'm not the type of guy that just put my name on a product and let it go out and sell. You know, especially with something that's been with me ever since I stepped foot in, in the game of basketball and the pros. So I gotta have input. I gotta put my my little touch on it. I like that. <laughs> I love that one. You never showed me this one. Now. But you know I picked this one first, didn't you? Because I like the ribbon. I like the ribbon with the suede and the white bottom. Connect these two. I love it. Blue represent. This training shoe is about lost words. I just enjoy the game. I didn't play a hard style. I didn't play a physical style. I played a graceful style of game. When you look at events, there's an enjoyment there, there's certainly a creativity there. And I think the jump man symbolize creativity, but yet still a joy and love for the game. The tongue, the long pants. You know, it was a difference there that made the jump man. It was my own. You guys gonna make me blush. I dreamed I was missing. You were so scared. I can't be who you are